welcome back. So that's had plenty of time to dry now. We can take it out the clamp. And think about flattening it. Now this face, because I put it down on the bench, is pretty much flat. It can feel very, very slight ridges from board to board, but hardly anything at all. So that won't take much work. Now the other side, there are some differences, and that gives me a good chance to show you how to flatten the panel. So to flatten the top, I've clamped on a thin board across my bench that acts as a stop against which I can hold the tabletop. Tabletop is flat on the bench, giving plenty of support. I can move it backwards and forwards just to get these far edges. And I'm going to be planing with a curved blade across the boards. A curved blade, because it will be coming out of the cut at both sides, means I won't get lots of tear out planing across the grain. Now, ideally, I'll have as long a plane as possible to do this. be able to see they feather to the edges. And that's why I say avoids any tear out. So I can wind the blade down just a little bit more, keep going at that, and eventually we'll find that all those ridges will disappear. I do tend to go slightly diagonal, cross one way and then back the other. That helps to avoid getting out of flat in the other direction. And that's virtually there. Now I'm just turning the table top round to work from the other direction. Now I'll just turn the table top round 90 degrees and I'm playing the long grain to give it a, a final finish. I'm not getting a perfect finish with the plane, so I've turned to a card scraper, which will help a lot with the grain. So that's on top, flattened and smoothed pretty well. If you're having trouble uh, flattening it with a plane, then I suggest you keep practicing going across the grain. Um, you might end up with a rough surface, but you should get it flat. It's a fairly simple procedure. The flatness of the plane sort of guarantees that you'll end up with a flat surface. Actually getting it smooth with a plane that can be tricky and that does take a lot more practice. So if you're having trouble at this stage and you just want to move on, then you can always use sandpaper. Now I'll turn the tabletop upside down, so this is the bottom of it. I'm going to mark the circumference of the circle and I'm going to do that using uh, my panel gauge that I made in a recent video and this little accessory circle marking attachment and there'll be a video on that as well, hopefully fairly soon. So that clips onto the gauge, like so. Now you may well ask, where do we put the pivot point? Uh, that's where this other little aid comes in. It's to stick with a pivot point on it. Put the pivot in that hole. And then we can test different diameters working off that. And when we're finished, Pull that off, drill our centre hole. I 
Okay, that's super. Remove that for the moment. That's my center point. So I just want to drill about a four or five mil deep pivot hole. Okay, so let's mark the jolly old circle. So we've got a lovely clear circle on there to cut. Can't use this saw particularly to cut that circle, but I did promise at the beginning that I would try and do one of these tables with just this saw. So I'm going to give it a go. It will mean making multiple tangential cuts and then we'll finish off to the line with a plane. So with a number of tangential cuts, you can actually get close up to your circle and we can finish the circle with a hand plane. But I think it's much more sensible to use something like a coping saw, which we can steer as we're cutting. So, let me start that. The other nice thing about the coping saw is I can sit down whilst I'm doing it. circle roughly cut now I can plane it to the line. To do that I'm going to clamp it to the bench, just lift it up, my piece of 18mm MDF here, just brings it up so that my plane, centre of the blade, will be roughly where the work is. And it's just a case of using the plane on the bench and working towards your line. I want to run a fairly wide bevel around the underside and a narrow bevel around the top side. So I reckon we've finished shaping the top now. Got a lovely thin edge, small bevel on the top, large bevel underneath. That's going to look pretty fine on top of our table. Still got some nail holes to fill in and some slightly larger holes on the back side. And I've not yet decided what I'm going to do to fill those with. But uh, that'll be next time. Cheerio. Take a moment to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on social media for extra photos and videos from the workshop. Cheerio!